Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be discussing the rate of change. And in algebra, we know that as slope. Rate of change is simply a comparison of how one quantity changes with respect to another quantity. And one of the key things is that they form a ratio. Uh, some examples of that would be like $50 per hour. So that's the ratio of dollars to hours or 30 points per minute or 25 gallons per hour. Uh, to give you an example of how that might apply here, if you went on a shopping spree and spent $1,200 in four hours, the rate of change for money in your pocket would be $300 per hour. So in algebra, the rate of change is called a slope. And the thing we need to know about slope is it describes the steepness of a line. Slope comes in four different forms. We've got a positive slope, which would be this one right here, which means as you move up from left to right, all the y values are increasing, so that's positive. We've got a negative slope, which means as you move from left to right, the y values are decreasing, negative. We have a zero slope, that's flat. And then we have the one that's undefined, that's vertical. So vertical lines are undefined slope, and horizontal lines have a zero slope. So those are the different types of slopes we need to recognize, and then we're gonna apply some values to them. One of the first things we need to do is be able to calculate the slope on a graph. Now, slope is the measure in the change in y over the change in x. So I have that ratio right here, change in y over change in x. And some of you might know it better as rise over run. So on a graph, what we do is we pick a particular point that has an x, has an x and y that are both integer values. So let's say, for example, this point right here, which is at negative 3, 4. And then we find another value, which has another integer uh, intersection, which would be right here, 0, 2. And actually, I could do this a couple of times. Let's say I come over here to this one, and it looks like another one right here. Now, slope, as we said, is change in y over change in x. So it's the rise over the run. So I'm going to start from left to right, and I'm going to go down 2 and to the right 3. So going down 2 would be negative 2, and to the right is positive 3. So the slope here would be negative 2 thirds. And then if I go and calculate the slope again, down 2 to the right 3, you'll see it's exactly negative 2, 3. And it will be that all the way across the entire graph. The nice thing about uh, slope on a straight line is it's constant between any two points. So, for example, if I started right at the left again and I went down, and I go all the way down this way and then over to this point right here what we have here is down 6 and to the right 9 which makes negative 6 ninths but if you reduce that you'll see we're back to negative 2 thirds and that's how you find the slope on a graph Calculating slope from ordered pairs is sometimes a little bit quicker and more convenient, especially when you don't have a graph in front of you. Now the official formula is to use M for slope. So anywhere you see M in linear equations, M stands for the rise and the run or the change in Y or the change in X. That's the slope. So that's slope there. And the actual calculation for change, and I know I use this little delta symbol to stand for change, change in the Y values, change in rise, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. As far as those subscripted numbers go, the two and the one, we're referring to the points. Let's say that this is point one and this is point two. So the x and y of this first one will be a one, and the x and y for the second one would be two. And then if we put them in order there, so let's go ahead and calculate the slope. I took these points from the previous graph, so we know what the slope is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a negative two-thirds. So I'm going to put the y values in first on the top. So the bottom y was a negative two. So this y goes first at negative two, minus sign. And then I'm going to put in my four second. So that's four. Draw my line, my fraction bar. And then I'm going to go back to the same point. Since I started with this number in the bottom for the x values, i got to start with this number here, which is 6, minus, and then I'm going to put the other x in there, and you better put this in parentheses like that. And the top number, negative 2 minus 4, is negative 6. And the bottom number is 6 minus negative 3, which is going to give us 
positive 3 or plus 3. Uh, 6 plus 3 gives us 9. And you can see that the slope is negative 2 thirds. For those of you that really understand rise and run, there is a shortcut to this. And this works for slope every time. And if you see these two points over here, how they're stacked up, I put a line underneath them and I put a minus outside. And let's not forget that this is x and this is y. And remember that we're, we're doing the change in y over the change in x. So change in y means just subtract the 2. So I'm going to subtract 4 minus negative 2. And that will give me 6. And I put that on top because remember that's y. So that's change in y. And then I'm going to do top from bottom, negative 3 minus 6. And that's going to give me negative 9. And if I reduce that, I still get a 2 thirds. And anytime there's a negative sign on the fraction, the whole number is, is negative. I tend to put my negative signs up there with the numerator, although you could put them out to the side. We also need to know how to calculate slope from a table. And ideally, in the table, we want the x values to go in an increasing fashion. They don't always work out that way. However, the concept of slope from a table is exactly the same. We're going to do the change in y over the change in x. So we're going to calculate the change in the first two y values. So it's 4 minus 2. And it's always a minus. Remember, change is subtract. So it's the top one minus the bottom one here. So 4 minus 2, and that leaves us with 2. And then for the x's, we come to this side, and we do top minus bottom. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. And then I could just rewrite that so that my negative is in the numerator, just like this. And if this is a linear equation, this, the rise and run will be the same no matter which two points we choose. So let's say I choose the top point and the bottom point, like this. So 4 minus negative 2, and that will give me positive 6. And then i got to go back and use the same two points again here. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. And then if I reduce that, I'm back to negative two-thirds again. So calculating slope from a table is just like calculating slope from two points. All right, for this one, we're going to start with a standard form equation. So we're going to calculate the slope from standard form. Now, standard form is simply ax plus by equals c. And you'll notice a couple key features here is that x and y are on the same side together. And then there's some constant value. But the letters a, b, and c have some things that they have to, or some rules that they have to apply by. Uh, let's see, the first one is a, b, and c must be integers, meaning you can't have fractions and you can't have decimals. And the letter a, which is the leading coefficient, cannot be negative. Now remember, slope is using the letter m. So slope here, m, is negative a over b. So the opposite of what you see here divided by what you see here. So what is the slope of this equation? Remember, slope is m. And what I would do is I would identify the a value and the b value. So a is 2 and b is a positive 3. Notice how I include the positive sign there. And according to the formula up here, we're going to take the opposite of a. So a is 2, so the opposite is negative 2 over b, and b is 3. And we, you can see we have the same slope as we've had before. I've been using the same equation throughout. So the slope here is negative 2 thirds. For this equation, most people are already familiar with slope-intercept form. It's y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. What we're going to do now is convert a standard form equation into slope-intercept. So this one down here, this is a standard form equation, but we're going to rewrite it so that we solve this for y by itself. Okay, so if I'm solving for y by itself, I need to get rid of the 5x and the times negative 2. But which one do I get rid of first? Remember, we're solving, so we're going to do reverse order of operations. So we're going to get rid of the 5x first. So minus 5x equally from both sides, minus 5x. And we have a negative 2y is equal to... Now, we like to put the variables up front. So I'm going to put the negative 5 up front and then add the 6 to the end of it. And y is not by itself yet. We still got to get rid of this 
negative 2. And the way we get rid of it is to undo what it's doing. It's multiplying with y. So we're going to undo that with a divide by negative 2. And I'm going to divide negative 2 across the board here. Now this one right here, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1y. This one right here is, I'm just going to leave it as 5 over 2, because you're going to see how we do that on a graph. We're going to use slope as a rise over run. But negative over negative is 5 over 2, and the x comes along. And our last calculation here is a positive 6 divided by negative 2, which is going to give me a negative 3. And here is my slope-intercept equation. And remember, the coefficient of x, which is this one right here, is the slope. So the slope of this line is 5 halves. And the, and the b value, which is this number here, is the y-intercept. For our last slide, we're going to graph a line given the slope and one point that is on the line. So our starting point is going to be negative 5 and negative 3. So negative 5, negative 3 is right here. And we know that that point is on the line. We don't know what the direction of the line is, but we do know the slope is 4 over 3. Remember, this is change in y, which we call rise. And change, the bottom number, 3, is the change in the run, or the change in x, which we call run, rise over run. So if rise is positive, you go up. If run is positive, you go right. So they're both positive, so I'm going up and to the right. So I'm going to go up 4 and to the right 3 from the point that I started with. Don't start from the origin, start from the point that's on the line. So from here, I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3, and there's my next point. And I can go up 4 and 3 again if I wanted more points. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3, and there's my other point. And if I had more space, I could go further to the right or further to the left on the graph. But I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. Remember that these red lines right here are not actually part of the graph. They're just used to help me find the next point on the graph using the slope. So there's my line given a point that's on the line and the slope of the line. 